Well, good morning, Cuba, Missouri. That train goes through the center of Cuba. Can you imagine that noise every single morning? Actually, multiple times a day. Well, I ended up roughing it again last night. Stayed at the Wagon Wheel Motel in Cuba, Missouri. The Wagon Wheel was built in 1936 as a motel, a service station, as well as a cafe. After breakfast, Michael, Mark, and I decided to get an early start to the day. Just down the street from the hotel was this other landmark, a 1936 Phillips 66 gas station. How cool. Well, the next stop is an absolute must on Route 66. No life is complete without seeing this. I mean, really. It's the world's largest rocking chair, which actually doesn't rock. Well, damn those Australians for always wanting to have a good time. We just had to sample some of the local moonshine. The wildlife in the area is, well, a little wild. Our next destination was just off from an old abandoned section of Route 66. If you didn't know what you were looking for, you could easily ride right by it. It's not visible from the road. As a matter of fact, today's Route 66 doesn't even come close to this. John's Modern Cabins is only one funny part of this story. Modern Cabins. All right, now these are cabins that uh, one of the guys that used to do outlaw stuff with Billy the Kid, they hit out. It is Billy the Kid. <laughs> you motherfucker. Australia, Billy the Kid was Australian. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> These are the cabins that they hit out. I messed up a little bit of the history of the area. Okay, no, none of Billy the Kid's outlaw partners actually hit out in this area, but we certainly played it up like they did. I think Billy the Kid is in there, hiding out. Michael and Mark got in on the joke as well. Well, there's not much for modern amenities, but I did see an outhouse I could use and do a little reading. Honestly, I was just reading the articles. By the way, there was plenty of vacancies available at John's Modern Cabins. We got back on Route 66 and headed to our next destination. I swear, there were times when we thought we had Route 66 all to ourselves. That next destination we were heading to is Devil's Elbow. It was listed as one of the seven beauty spots in Missouri in 1941. Devil's Elbow still has its original 1923 steel truss bridge. Just before you cross the bridge is the Elbow Inn Bar and Barbecue Pit, which originally opened in 1936. We decided to stop in and get some good greasy bar food and some beers before getting back on Route 66. Well, we spent the night in Springfield, Missouri, which claims to be the birthplace of Route 66. It was in Springfield back in 1926 that officials first proposed the name of the new highway from Chicago to Los Angeles. Besides this Best Western sign and the Shamrock Court Hotel, there wasn't a lot of nostalgic Route 66 places in Springfield to visit. And there's this building that sticks out like a sore thumb. It belongs to the Hammonds family. The local baseball stadium, streets, other buildings are all named after the Hammonds family. There's even a creepy statue of Mr. Hammond downtown. It's like they own Springfield. Well, we got out of there as soon as we could. There was a lot of Route 66 to cover today and lots of places to see. Sinclair gas station in Paris Springs Junction 
dates back to 1930. It's been renovated into a quasi Route 66 museum. I decided to fill up. Since gas was only 15 cents a gallon, at least that's what the sign said. Back in the heydays of Route 66, there were countless drive-ins in operation along the old highway. Today, there are very, very few. The old 66 drive-in in Carthage is one of those few. When we pulled up, the owner came out yelling. As soon as he found out that Michael and Mark were Australian, he gave a personal tour. Anybody else? He said could get the hell out. It was so funny. The last little town before Kansas is Joplin, Missouri. Well, we crossed into Kansas. There's actually only 13 miles of Route 66 in Kansas, so it's going to be a quick ride through the area. Who knew that your happy place was in Galena, Kansas? One of the Route 66 attractions in Galena that I wanted to see most was Cars on the Route, which has a connection to the Pixar cartoon movie, Cars. It is said that when creators of the movie saw this particular tow truck, it gave them the inspiration for the character, Mater. Just down the street is a last of its kind, the Rainbow Curve Bridge, which was constructed in 1923. It's the last remaining Marsh Arch Bridge on Route 66. to Oklahoma. There's always one thing that comes to mind when someone says Oklahoma to me. You'll enjoy Oklahoma's wide open space. Yes, Oklahoma, where you can get cuckoo burgers. Speaking of cuckoo. Holy shit! Just Miami's just ahead. I didn't even realize Route 66 went through Miami. Ready to go! Surf's up in Miami! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Miami beats you down the road! <laughs> yes, I think the heat is starting to get to me. Well, after thinking we were in Miami, Florida, we had to stop and figure out where we actually were. Oh, Miami, Oklahoma! Route 66 turns into a dirt road at one point in Oklahoma! Well, Michael decided to stop and make sure we were actually on Route 66. Come to find out, this is really Route 66. <laughs> hey, it's all part of the experience! Now, I ride a Harley as well, and I can tell you, the suspension in a Harley doesn't work very well on these types of roads. And as you can see, Mark was figuring that out. I think Michael on the Indian was faring a bit better. At least he looked like he was. I actually enjoyed riding in this section. It felt so nostalgic to be on this old, old road dating back to the 1930s. Now for each of the gas stations that have been restored along Route 66, there are just as many, if not even more, that have been abandoned, and have been abandoned for years. A relatively late addition to Route 66 is the Blue Whale. Welcome to the Blue Whale! Which was constructed in 1972. The Blue Whale was one of the final additions to a park and small zoo. It was a great recreational area of its time and gave the travelers a place to relax and cool off on their travels. Well, we made it to Tulsa, Oklahoma and decided to call it a day. We got in early enough so that we could run around and see some of the local Route 66 landmarks, like the Blue Dome. 
and Meadows Gold. Tonight was going to be a different type of adventure. We were camping. Alright, so it's day four on 2015 Go Western Man Road Trip. We are, we are between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Definitely roughing it in Tulsa, Oklahoma here. <laughs> it's, it's a lot better than camping right now. A lot better. So, probably going to get a little tougher uh, in Colorado, but camping right now, best camping I've ever done. So i got to give a shout out to the Campbell Hotel in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Absolutely amazing. Not only did they give me a discount because of military, which was the best discount I've ever received, it's just a great hotel. From the outside, it's very unassuming, but the inside is just spectacular. Each room has a different theme or flair to it, and they're amazing rooms. So if you're ever in Tulsa, Oklahoma, look up the Campbell Hotel. It's a beautiful place to stay. Well, after an amazing day of riding and a wonderful dinner, it was time to turn in and get ready for tomorrow's adventure. <laughs> 